God of the universe, maker of the stars, who am I? And here we go, episode number 36 of Life on Purpose. And David, he's back from vacation. Oh, welcome. Yes, glad to be back. Glad to be back in the normal room where we're at. So it's nice to be back, but I do miss being on vacation. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a good thing that you didn't stay gone two weeks because uh, Jaden was pushing you. Oh yeah, he, he's 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 chopping. <laughs> come back on this uh, this uh, <laughs> this tail again. This will be awesome. He did a great job. He really did. And uh, before we get to going any farther, we got a couple of announcements. Number one, revive at uh, Cool Springs, Tennessee, in just a couple of weeks, end of June. There, there, the hotel is filled. There's other hotels in the area though, and uh, but there is uh, you can still get reservations for that. Uh, the three of us and, and, and some others will be uh, there. We'll be doing young adult services uh, from, uh, let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 3.30 to 5.30 and probably a little bit more than that. And uh, But you guys are heading to Camp Mashiach this next week in Whittier, North Carolina, just up the road yep. from me. And surprise, surprise, I'm going to be there next Tuesday morning speaking. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So glad you're going to be there. So glad. Yeah. <laughs> it's so going to be good. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I just wish you guys were going to be there. That would be even better. But, uh, oh, well, we'll see what the week brings. You never know. You never know right. what next week could uh, change. The father might have some different plans for us. Hmm? Well, he knows <laughs> the plans he has for us. I, I've heard that <laughs> somewhere. Are we, wait, are we done already? Yeah, people are like, they're ending the show. Yeah. Hey, are see you guys done? next when week. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, you know, we won't oh, see you guys next week because you're going to be at Camp Mashiach. So here's a news flash that we have our second special guest coming on next week, uh, a man that uh, is part of our congregation. Uh, you guys have met him up at... Uh, uh, or down in, in Blue Ridge, mm -hmm. I guess they're in Blue Ridge for you down in, yeah, there for you down for whatever, uh, Alex styles <laughs> at that place at that one time, that one time, Alex, gonna be a good one. this yes, is going to be great. Uh, this is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's an episode I look forward to. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm looking forward to the day that we put Alex and you in a room together and lock the door. Uh Oh, that might be trouble. Yeah, <laughs> only thing will be yeah, will available, be and there yes. was a microphone. Yeah, Ooh. Be cool. Mm -hmm. So Alex is All great. Right, He's he, this yeah. is gonna be his first. Yeah, don't miss that one. That's gonna be good. First ever radio appearance and uh, uh, radio awesome. you know, podcast YouTube. But this is gonna be the first time he's ever done this. Super Very cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. So guys, what are we talking about? Spirit and truth. <sighs> Spirit oh, and truth. So it should be a story about that, hmm. you know, like like a Messiah meeting somebody and talking to them about that. Some, yeah, because uh, yeah. was that John four? Yeah, John, yeah, the Samaritan woman. Hmm. So when it says the Father nah, is seeking too, those, too are realistic. Worship... I think you guys are making that up. Oh uh, yeah, I know. When it says the Father <laughs> is looking for those, seeking those that would hmm. worship in spirit and truth. Just right off the bat, what does that mean to you guys? Uh, I was afraid you were going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody uh, go. I got to think about truth. this one. For Let's me. say I think it's something beyond just. Uh, I think the first thing you have to look at it from that perspective is spirit and truth. You're like, okay, but I try to attempt to be truthful in everything I do, especially if you are a believer. You like look at things and go, well, I want to be. And as far as we know, she was a Samaritan, not exactly sure exactly what that meant in her belief system, right? But he's saying spirit and truth. And she asked the question, well, you say it's here, but we say it's here. And he's like, eh, that doesn't matter. It's like you children are all bickering about something that in the end really doesn't matter. It's actually he's seeking out for someone who is, uh, doesn't matter in a... Um, uh, I'm not me. I'm not putting light on the temple. I'm not putting light mm -hmm. on those things. Again, sure. it's just for whoever's listening. I'm not putting that lightly. 
<laughs> he's saying, no, you're you're missing the point. What oh, you're period. looking for is not that. What you're looking for is this. Mm-hmm. What is worshiping in spirit and truth. And then from that perspective of spirit and truth, recognizing that it's not just a physical action of worshiping. It is also a spiritual act of doing that. And I think this is where we can go off in a lot of things, but that's my first right off the bat thing is that okay. realizing that it's more than just a physical thing. Mm-hmm. So okay, I, ahead, I just Ryan. kind of, you got something. Yeah. I, I went and, uh, Somehow I always end up going to like Charles Spurgeon. (laughs) I like what he says here on this. He says the woman's conscience, because he's referencing the Messiah's conversation with the Samaritan woman. He said the woman's conscience had been aroused by Messiah's declaration of her sin. He was touching upon matters of the most vital importance and her depraved heart naturally shrunk from the lancet. From the truth, which was becoming inconveniently personal, she flew to that natural resort of the carnal mind, namely, to religious discourse upon points of outward observance. Instead of confessing her sin and asking how it may be forgiven, she says, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. The carnal heart dreads the contact of spiritual truth and finds a most convenient way of avoiding it by running to questions of holy places, of holy times, and of holy customs. Yeshua, to her astonishment, informs her that the question which she had asked was of only temporary importance. There had been a time when it was well to know that salvation was of the Jews and that the rival temple of the Samaritans was an imposter. But he says in effect to her woman, believe me, that question is of no importance now. For the hour cometh, yea, and and now is, when the external is to be abolished, the ritualistic put away, and a purer, simpler, and more spiritual worship is to take its place. Hmm. So, kind of digesting that for a second, I like that question of, Mm -hmm. she's asking a spiritual question of, okay, well, where do I go to worship? right okay but avoiding the carnal like he says of please forgive me you know how can i be forgiven Mm -hmm. if you will almost as if you know knowing that this place in samaria was a uh an imposter as he says Mm -hmm. almost as if saying uh well i haven't had the ability to go and rectify my sin at the temple right Okay. Therefore, acknowledging the spiritual, but not acknowledging the truth. One might say mm-hmm. a version of a, a whitewashed sepulcher. Mm. Mm. All right, Daniel. Um. So, a quick definition of worship is uh, the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. Um, so for the example I'm going to give, let's just kind of boil that down to the expression of adoration. So to show adoration for, so let's say that, um, my, my oldest son, Ruben wants to show adoration for me. There's a couple different ways he could do this. Um, for the purpose of the example, we'll do two. Um, there is the, the spirit of adoration, or there's the truth of the adoration. So. He could, in one way, take on who I am and everything he does to show adoration for me. He could look at my character. He could look at how I do things and try to emulate that. But he could do it in such a way that he's doing everything that I don't ask him to do, or he's not doing the things that I do ask him to do. But he has the spirit of the adoration for me because he's trying to uh, he, he's trying to emulate my values. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other possibility of he carries a a somber uh, countenance, maybe. Uh, maybe he's just kind of a regretful whatever, and he just but he does everything that I ask him to do. But he's downtrodden. He looks like begrudgingly. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Begrudgingly doing 
the things that I do ask him to do. And so in one sense, he's showing adoration for me by doing what I'm asking him to do. In the other sense, he's showing adoration for me by emulating everything that I value. And so when you put those together, then you have someone who is both doing the things they are supposed to do and having the fruit that comes from that and also emulating the values of the person that they are trying to show adoration or worship for. And so I think that this is one of the things Yeshua is, or at least an interpretation I have of what he is saying here Mm -hmm. is that the father is seeking those who will worship him both in a way that emulates his values and his love and who he is, and also his truth and the righteous judgments that he has. Mm. Okay. You, what you're talking about, Daniel, is really reminding me of the uh, the tax collector and the Pharisee. I think if you think about it, it almost has some mm-hmm. similar correlations there. I was thinking yeah. like that whole idea of like how he uses it when people think that they're above that righteous or they are they are at a righteousness level. He tells the parable of the Pharisee and how the Pharisee reacted to God and then mm-hmm. how the tax collector reacted to being in the presence of God. I think you could actually argue the Pharisee was looking at it from his own perspective only, like you're talking about, not through God's perspective, but then the tax collector comes in through the perspective of the almighty king going, forgive me, I am a sinner. That mm-hmm. is literally all I can say at this point. I am mm-hmm. like lowly and that truth, that honesty. I think that there's a, something about that. Um, but no, I, that's what I immediately thought of when you were talking about that. I think that you've got it. You're on to something mm-hmm. like that for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. L- let's, let's try to, Maybe uncomplicate. Okay, I, I mean, I I love uh, a lot of the writings, like taking back to to Ryan of uh, of Charles Spurgeon, uh, and I agree with a lot of things that you read that Spurgeon said. But in the end, I felt like he complicated the issue. That hmm. that maybe there's more of a simpli- simplification here that is being missed. And first of all, we have to define a couple of things. The Father is wor- looking for those that would worship in spirit and in truth. Okay, I think that last week's program was a prime example of what it means to walk in and worship in spirit. Because if we are being obedient to his voice in our lives, is that not a, a is that not also worship? Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So so let's take last week's program kind of handled the definition of being obedient to his voice is a tough word. Cuz I, I don't know about mm-hmm. you but you know hearing a voice from heaven a lot of people try a lot of people get tripped up in that. Do you do you see that? kind of a seg- little, little different little trail here. Um, do you see people getting tripped up with, with, well, I want God to speak to me. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I'll just jump in. Then I, uh, yeah, people like to think that there is, there is only one way that God will communicate through you and being around this enough to know that there is plenty of ways that God speaks to somebody. Sometimes it's through an audible voice. Sometimes it's through vision. Sometimes it's through feelings that that are more than just the typical feelings of the flesh. It's more than that. It's like a, a, a feeling of like, uh, uh, let me say like, I've seen that all, quite a few times. And that's even something more for me is that, that drawing. It's almost like I can't stop. I'm being pulled by a wave, a current. And that's it, a current being moved and being prodded towards something. It could be in such a way as that. You're right. I think sometimes people trap themselves by saying, unless God tells me specifically, it's like, it's not always, that's not always the way it works. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sometimes it's, Mm -hmm. he'll tell you in the most obvious way in your, before your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, I think, yes, people definitely get hung up on the word voice and immediately jump to that audible sound um but think of it this way so we're all married um so let's let's paint a scenario where 
uh, our our wives are in a group of, of 20 other women and we have our we're blindfolded we should be able to pick out their voices pretty easily like if each of them talk one by one we're gonna know which one is our wife yeah um but let's say we're deaf someone who can only see could point out the person they're looking for you know let's just keep with so if we're all deaf and you put us far away we're still going to be able to see which one of those women is our wives um but then let's take it one step further let's say we're blind and deaf like go and helen keller she she uh, interacted with the world strictly through feel Mm -hmm. and i'm sure that she could feel tell who a person was by their feel um in the way that we could pick out someone through hearing them or through seeing them in that way and so it's not just a person's voice that we can learn to identify it's their likeness it's their it's their voice it's the way they look it's the way they feel it's just the, the like and and then there's something even deeper just kind of the spiritual side of what they evoke inside of you and so it's not just a voice thing it's not just an audible sound thing it's a it's a likeness that you come to understand and uh, identify. Mm-hmm. It's sure. interesting. That's kind of where you took it because that's where my mind went as well, Daniel, uh, mm-hmm. to sort of our relationship, our intimate relationship we would have with our wives, uh, even to the point, like you said, let's take it further, even than, um, you know, if you were deaf or blind, what if, for instance, they were not with you, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe perhaps they had, you know, they left or they had, uh, you know, unfortunately passed away for some reason, right? There would be those those ideas, those um, desires or certain characteristics that through spending time with them, they would leave with you. Or when you in, would encounter certain situations, you would know, well, this is how she would have acted, or mm-hmm. this is what she would mm-hmm. have done, or this is what she would have told me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it carries even into that. Uh, where when we yeah. find through our study and our relationship, our intimate relationship with the Father, sometimes we'll get into a situation and we instinctively know what his desire would be because hopefully we've spent enough time hearing his voice, if you will. But mm-hmm. voice, like you, like everybody's saying, it, used in this loose term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so the spirit side of this is maybe, you know, the one that <clears throat> the one that people think is the most difficult uh, is is really not. I mean, just spending time in prayer, uh, spending time in mm-hmm. worship, that should be teaching us uh, about Him and and how to respond to things based upon upon mm-hmm. that. But then there's this thing of truth, and here's the question that that has to be asked: Whose truth? Hmm. Yeah, what is truth? I want, to, I want to jump on this one. I want to jump on this one. Okay. Um, so I'm going to jump on the word revelation, which is revealed truth. Okay. And if there is if there is one overarching truth, which we believe there to be, that is God's truth, then he is the one who is the revealer of the truth. And if he is the one who reveals the truth, he could also choose in what capacity to reveal which truth, what capacity to reveal the truth to people. Meaning, and, and this goes back to a verse that you like to talk a lot about, Dad. Um, I think it's in Joel, of either Joel or Amos. Um, how can two walk together unless they be um, agreed, which the word is better translated as destined? Um so how can two walk together unless they be destined together? And what that's saying is we don't have to agree with each other to walk with each other. But if you just take this thing to its like full conclusion, if there's only one truth, then we should all be the same within that truth, or we should all believe the same way about that truth. But that's not how it works because we're a bunch of individual people who have total different upbringings and characteristics and personalities and everything. And so each of us is walking in not our own truth, but our own revealed truth, the truth which God has revealed to us. And so 
the reason I'm making that distinction is because it's going to be super easy for, um, you know, people who the, the Christian bashers. Uh, it's going to be it's going to make it super easy for them to pop out of the woodwork and just point at the Christians and say they don't walk in the truth because they're not walking in Torah. And I I'm sorry, but I I have my own stances on that. Of mm-hmm. I I think that a lot of them are walking in the truth that God has revealed to them, and they're walking in that truth very well. Um, and so, yeah, I think I mm. made my point, actually. Totally agree. <laughs> mm, that was good. I like that revealed truth. Oof. Um, I would like to take it from the perspective then of like what you're talking about, and I love that perspective. I think then I want to look at it, I think in the, in the context of what your response is before, either with understanding your revealed truth or before you've understand understood your real truth. I've realized over the years what prayer prayer um how it's been developed what that means to pray what that means to seek the father what that means and everyone has their own uh revelation as to how that goes for them maybe i can use your words there um (laughs) do it something like that but i think the approach i want to i want to go back to that uh the tax collector and the pharisee the tax collector comes at it with his his revealed truth him knowing i am a sinner like that's 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 it i have nothing i can lay before you because isaac 64 says we are all all of our righteousness can amount up to like filthy rags like Mm -hmm. just to use that as just an example like this to like just to know how like lowly and he humbled himself before the father before his creator before his king he humbled himself instead of exalting himself saying he did all these wonderful things in the name of god or for his benefit, but in reality, it was like, no, you're serving yourself. Your truth is for you. If the, if we're looking at the Pharisee, the tax collector, and what I wanted to say from outside of that, I think there's a point to this whole thing of truth is that you come before God in truth that you are. Don't come to Him espousing another another uh, another person or a person that you think that God wants you to be. No, he wants the raw you, whoever mm-hmm. you actually are, what you are actually mm-hmm. oh, going through right now. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at from now again, and that's not the total picture because I think that you're right. It's that revealed truth. But how many times I remember being realizing I was missing out on this genuineness in the relationship with the Father in heaven, knowing I could be truthful with him with whatever I was going through. And it mm, was, that is such I can work point. with truth. Yeah. And someone said that a long time ago, said with praying to God, then he went, then I got honest with God and went, that's what I work with, honesty. And it's yeah. like, wow, realizing being honest with the Father, having that genuine relationship because my, who I am, and I'm still discovering who I truly am in the Father's eyes. I know the basics, right? You're a child of God, all this stuff. And then, but then realizing the price he paid for you to take with that, but Jane talked about a couple weeks ago, that whole idea of the price God paid for you to, I guess, truly hope to understand the, the, the magnitude of what that price was for a reason, not just for you to just walk through the, it's like, there was a reason for it. And so I'm trying to humble myself to understand, God, I'm still struggling with this, struggling with that. Can you help me in this? So that I can fully magnetize, like mag, be in full mag, uh, magnanimity to you, what you want me to be, and to deal with whatever it is. So, anyways, that's something that that was what's been sticking out to me with that truth part. Mm. Mm. Ryan, what you mm. got there? Super good. Just messing around with the idea of of truth. You know, because we get asked, "What is truth?" You know, define truth, which is funny because if you go to the Webster, I'm, I'm going to rabbit trail here for a second. I apologize. If you go to the Webster, it says uh, truth, the quality or state of being true. Well, you still haven't defined what true is. Yeah, that's that's super vague. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, and of course, now in, in this current day and time, we see people that are living their own truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I would say if we go back to, let's say, Latin, it would be what veritas. So that which has been verified. Mm. Well, verified yeah. by what standard? Because if we're, if we're speaking of discovering something, I'm going to use uh, my, my dog, for instance, right? 
So like most dogs, her favorite thing in the world is a tennis ball, right? Well, I bought her a tennis ball, so I know the tennis ball exists. So that is true, right? She loses the tennis ball one evening, and it goes behind the dresser. She knows it's there because she can smell it. I do not know it's there because I can neither smell nor see it. The ball exists, but I do not sense it. But she senses it. Mm. So its existence is truth to her as it has been revealed because of its smell. It does not come truth to me until I lay eyes on it. And then the truth of its existence became revealed. I'm using the tennis ball, I think, to subject uh, as an object or a, um, a fill-in, a stand-in. I love it. As something that could be um, observed. So the only thing mm -hmm. that we could have as observable truth wouldn't be what, but who. Who is truth? And I think if we go to scripture, it's he says, the Messiah says, I am the way, I am the truth, mm -hmm. and I am the life, which in Hebrew is a met. And if we look at the construction of a met, it is literally constructed of the, the beginning, the middle, and the end of their alphabet. Yeah. And so it encompasses all things. So therefore, he who is truth encompasses all things, and only through him can those things be verified. Am I making sense? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so could we think about it like this, that, um, were you done, Ryan? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Um, could we think of it like this, that um, our life, so if he is truth, okay, he is truth, period. And so our life is a journey toward him which means that in that journey we should be walking in on a daily basis greater revealed truth so every day should be a new revelation of his truth mm -hmm. and the problem what daniel was talking about is looking at someone else and saying well they're not walking in truth or well, they're walking. So, you know, it, it, I, I use an analogy. I haven't used this in a long time. That as we're walking along, we have people that are ahead of us. Okay. Uh, just because of I've been doing this longer, I should be walking in a greater uh, level of his truth than someone that hasn't been walking in it as long. Uh, just It's not judgmental. It's just if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, then I should mm -hmm. be farther along. Uh, there's people that have just received the the beginning of that and are on that that walk. So um, if I if I it is wrong for me to look at people who are ahead of me and say, well, they're legalistic, and look at people behind me and say, well, they're immature. Mm -hmm. No, they're just where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And those good. that are those that are in front of me should be challenging me to catch up with them. And I should be living my life in such a way that those that are behind me should be striving at a greater level to catch up with me. Instead of looking at each other and judging each other. Or, yeah, well, that works so well. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> so well. So are you not quoting like the parable with the, uh, the workers that were there in the morning and then the workers came in later on in the evening and the mm -hmm. reward was yeah. the same? And they're like, well, we were here all day. <laughs> We've been here all the whole time. And it's like the reward's the same, y'all. It's yeah. we're all gonna get there and it's and all that's, for his glory. And, and that's a good point, uh, kind of tying in what Ryan was saying that it is only like Yeshua being the tr truth is the one he, he is the one that levels the playing field. Like he's the one that makes it even for everyone, so that the person who is ahead is on the in, in some ways is on the same level as the person who is behind. And so it's, yeah, it, it's, it's all, it, it's all of the above. It's not any, it's not A, B or C, it's D. It's all the above. <laughs> yes. All Regardless above. of how much has been revealed or not revealed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry guys. I'm, I, it, keep going. I'm, 
I'm not distracted. I'm not trying to be distracted. I'm working on a Israel tour at the same time tonight with some people that are trying to book flights. So keep going. I'll be right so, back with you. Oh, rub it in, Mike. I was, I was going to say, just, <laughs> like just uh, I was, I was going to say back and backing up to um, uh, Dad when you said that the, the part with the of the spirit, it's not complicated. And I was just going to say that. I think one of the greatest successes of the enemy has been promoting the idea that the Holy Spirit is complicated mm -hmm. or that the truth is complicated. Um, yeah. It was never supposed to be like that. It was, it was never supposed to be complicated. It's always been simple because the Bible is for, the Bible is for the simple with a lot to be gained by the complex as well. Meaning <laughs> you don't have to be the person with the highest IQ in the room to get everything that you need from the scriptures. But for those who are more intellectually ad adept, there's plenty more for you to do and discover and to teach others. And yeah, I just wanted to, to point that out because man, it is so much simpler than the enemy it's not, it's not your friends that have made it seem complicated. It's not anything like that. It's straight up the devil making it feel like reaching God or dwelling with him or understanding what is necessary to understand about him is complicated. It's not. It isn't. It's in fact a lie, the opposite of truth. So exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could we consider this complicatedly simple? This reminds <laughs> simple, me of... Uh, sim simply complicated. I what saw a... Uh, a video on on Facebook recently of a uh, a lady. She was trying to. It was basically two side by side videos, and one was like reading and studying the scripture and walking in it, uh, and then like you know trying to you know I don't know live a, a religious life without any of the scripture, the, the handbook, if you will. And it was a lady with the typical like tube of, of biscuits that you get that pop open. Yeah. You unwrap the you know, and she's there with the can opener opening the end of it and she's like i wish there was just an easier way to do this <laughs> i have yeah, i gotta tell you i uh, i found a really easy way to to uh to open one i was uh a bag boy at winn dixie when i was uh 16 17 years old and uh we had to be pretty fast we were our our boss was he was something else and uh so i learned how to bag really really fast and so i was you know you know doing the toss toss from one hand in the other hand and uh i missed when i threw the biscuit can from one hand to the other i missed with this can and uh when it hits the floor it opens really easy <laughs> real easy yeah yeah so okay uh that's that was absolutely worthless uh moment in time but uh it was, it was part of my memories and i enjoy those sometimes no, so, it was I, it was a revealed truth to, to it was revealed yeah. your life. <laughs> now they can say that they have learned from uh life on life on purpose uh from both bullets and biscuits yeah yeah i know if you if, <laughs> it's got it so and if right, you've never done it before get you some biscuits and do, do it for yourself yeah there you go <laughs> you could join our revealed truth <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it ryan bullets uh -huh. and biscuits now that would be a way to open the can that would be that would <laughs> be fun most definitely you've you mm -hmm. you now know what ryan cribs is going to be doing this sunday amen, <laughs> amen. okay let's so let's good. simplify it one more level guys here we go you ready mm. psalm 119 the longest psalm in the in in all the the longest chapter in, in all of scripture, the longest Psalm in the Psalms, it, it gives us the answer. In Psalm 119, verse 142, your righteousness is eternal righteousness and your Torah is truth. There it is. And, and if you want to go to Hebrew, you can look up the word in it, and the word is Torah. So it's translated in most translations as law. Okay, terrible translation. Maybe we'll devote a program to that one of these days. It says, your Torah is truth. So when we are walking in spirit, but we're walking in truth, what is that saying? That what we do in spirit will always be within the boundaries of that which is revealed to mm -hmm. us in the Torah, the first five books of Scripture. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Indeed. Anybody think of an example? I mean, this is really just, you know, it's it's the guardrails. Mm. You know, go too far one way, you're off the cliff. Go too far the other way, you're in the woods. I know a lot of people that are either off the cliff or in the woods or both. Off the cliff and in the woods. (laughs) 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 Don't get personal. No, no. but uh, (laughs) That's really it. Because the Spirit's never going to, the Holy Spirit's never going to violate the truth. Point. There it is. Spirit, right? He even says, as Spirit. You nailed it. Yeah. God does not contradict himself. So what he what you believe you're hearing from his spirit will never be in contradiction to what is written in his word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it does seem like it conflicts, then there might be more understanding that he's be surrounding that. Every time I've seen something that conflicts, mm-hmm. every time I look at it and go, wait a minute, let me see if there's more to this here. Maybe I need to dig more. Because uh, it's a matter for kings to search things out, right? Doesn't it say that in the word? So sometimes there's points where you actually need to search it out. You need to search for truth mm-hmm. and finding that because in the journey of pursuing truth, uh, way more will be revealed to you than just that simple truth that you're looking for. Way more. God's found in that truth being revealed, like you talked about, Daniel. Like, yeah, it's it's big. Yeah. Don't wait on me. that. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. About the process. Mm-hmm. So, so let's do something crazy and consider that these words are on the back of the words in chapter three, which is when he's talking to um, the, the disciples of John, he's talking about them. He, he says, uh, he's talking about the the person who trusts has eternal life and he who disobeys does not. So to walk in spirit and truth is to walk toward him. And in order to do so, we must make a decision that I would rather have his truth than any man's truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what social media says it doesn't matter what my friends say it it doesn't matter about you know who's doing uh daniel knows very well and and his two siblings know this very well the last thing you wanted to come to dad with is well everyone's doing it how did that work out daniel not great (laughs) it was like not great yeah that, that's the any dead fish can swim downstream. Mm-hmm. When we come to the place of deciding, the only one who can, who can give me eternal life is the one who declares himself as truth. So if I desire to have that which is eternal life, then I have to decide to have his truth and everybody else's so-called truth has to be trashed. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's funny. I was actually having a very similar conversation to that with my wife uh, just yesterday, I think. Um, we are just going through, you know, because we're, we're talking about like the we talked about a lot of things. I'll choose one of the easier ones. Uh, we were talking about music, about like how we want to, um, you know, instill a desire to play instruments for our kids, but like just trying to figure out like how to go about that in a way that doesn't dress us out and doesn't stress them out. Yeah. Um, and we actually, I, I was telling her what you said, what you were saying the other day, Ryan, um, about Beethoven, how he just came in with, uh, a giant sledgehammer and wrecked the entire uh, idea of what music should be at, uh, in his day. Mm-hmm. Um, because for, for Beethoven, like the, 
the way that they did music before he came in was truth. Like it was truth to have a very structured, uh, you know, a few sets of how you would compose uh, a piece of music. And Beethoven just came in and said, yeah, you know, I'm not super into that. I'm just going to do what I do. Um, and so he, he had a connection to music that none of the others did. He saw something that none of the others did and it allowed him to say, yeah, I'm just going to ignore all you guys and do what I think should be done. And for us, what we think should be done is based upon Yeshua and, and his truth, the truth of his word. And we should be of that, uh, to worship him in, in spirit and, and truth is to be connected to him and to connect, be connected to his word so that we can be those people who can go into situations and go into ideas and guide their, their lives in such a way that it doesn't matter what the masses are doing or what everyone else is doing, because we have, we know because of how we worship our God, how it should be done and how it should not be done. That's right. And this goes back to the conversation we had about, you know, knowing his voice knowing what his desires are, what his mm -hmm. truth is, so that we can walk that out. You know, which is interesting for Beethoven, because even though he's going outside of the, the established truth of the time, he's not breaking the laws of music theory. So therefore, is sort mm -hmm. of this idea of the, the Torah being the, those guardrails for what the Spirit is teaching you. He is not breaking the rules. He is merely broadening the way that he travels within them and broadening their application. And I think sometimes maybe that we come to the Torah and to our walk in it sometimes too narrowly, you might say, um, and don't maybe apply it to everything in our life. It should be applied to. Uh -huh. So then we aren't fully walking in spirit and in truth. We're only walking in part of a truth. If that's a possibility. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I reconcile with that. Yeah. That idea of, okay, you put that you, or maybe even box it in. This is, this is Torah. You are coming to like the truth of understanding that there's the, that whole Bible, right? The whole thing. And then you're like, all right, well then you go into this and then how often it is that then you focus, you narrow it down. It has to be within these parameters. And then I will set with even further parameters on that. It's like, um, that's you. That's you. <laughs> That's you yeah. doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Where my truth is, is, is been infinite. Like you talked about the tennis ball. It's been here since the, the beginning. It's always been there. And then coming to a realization of realizing that you might not have it figured out. And realizing I want your truth no matter what. Because you can read the scripture and interpret it in a way that is to your understanding. But then with the spirit, God will show you and, and even whether it be broad and or narrow, depending on the topic, can be then brought forth because it's within his truth. Oof. Let me bring out another verse, a uh, set of verses, some that we're very familiar with in the walk that we're in. It's in Jeremiah 16, verse 19. Adonai, my strength, my fortress, my refuge in time of trouble, the nations will come, the nations will come, the Gentiles. Uh, or we could say former Gentiles, will come to you from the ends of the earth saying, our ancestors inherited nothing but lies, futile idols, youth, completely useless. Can a person make himself gods? The fact is they're not gods at all. Therefore, I will make them know once and for all, I will make them know my power and my might. Then they will know that my name is yud heh vav -Heh. So here, here's a set of verses that are telling us that there's coming a time in, I, I think this is talking to all of us, there's coming, there, there are times in our lives that we realize that some of the things that we were taught in our life were wrong. Uh, I grew up in a, a totally different environment than you guys did. Uh, I did not grow up in this, this messianic Hebrew roots thing. I, I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. I, I you know, I, I grew spiritually in a Nazarene church, assembly of God. I was taught some things that just were not right, but I had to look and I'm not mad at anybody they taught me what they thought was right. Okay. When I was in Boy Scouts, they taught me things that they thought was, I, that they, they thought was right. When I was in school, same as you, they taught me what they knew. 
But there comes a time in all of our lives that we need to question what we've been taught by man based upon what the scripture is teaching us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. In yeah. Order for and you to have something. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Ryan. No, I was just going to say that, and that's what the uh, back to the the word emit. That's another one of its translation is that which is firm, mm -hmm. that which can be built upon. If you don't have, I mean, and we know this quite well, Dave, uh, in our business, and and you as well, uh, <laughs> Daniel. Without a good foundation, the house <laughs> just ain't going to stand. <laughs> it's not going to last very long at all no so yeah. then you first you have to establish what is your foundation and if it's this ever shifting well i'm going to live my truth well that's not a very strong foundation because that's subject some yeah. Yeah, english ryan that's subject to change tomorrow <laughs> yeah house built yeah. on sand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's like building trying to build a house from the roof down that's gonna sure. be funny <laughs> right. So, yeah, I think. Um, go ahead. Well, hold on. Go ahead and say what you're saying. I I gotta compose a little more. Okay. So let me let me just give you something basic. Okay. This is simple. I go to a restaurant, and, uh, you know, Ryan calls me and says, "Hey, I want to buy you dinner." And I'm like, "Yeah." Uh, so we go to a restaurant, and uh, we got these this beautiful salad. And uh, the, the waitress comes around and says, you know, do, do you want bacon bits on that? Well, my, you know, my fleshly spirit says, yeah, a lot of them. But I look to the scripture, <laughs> to, Le, uh, to Leviticus chapter 11, and I say, okay, I was taught that those verses were done away with. But when I look at the scripture, I find, no, there's nothing that says that they were ever done away with. And so the truth is not what I was taught. The truth is what the scripture says. So I look at this, at the waitress and say, no, please hold the bacon bits. That's not something that's part of what I believe food is. And I have just worshiped in spirit and truth. Yes. Because of obedience. So if I may, real, real fast, uh, just to throw this in. Right before the show, we were talking about a verse, uh, Mike, where you were talking about the, the three biggest commandments, right? Yeah. And that third one being to that you must love yourself. Yeah. Right? So I don't know why I'm going here, but it must be for a reason. So we're talking about what is truth and then what the world tells you. There's probably a few people listening that the world has told them a lot of stuff about themselves and who they are and what yeah. their value is. So then we need to establish what is truth. And then if you're saying that in order to worship in spirit or truth, we need to go and look at what the scripture says about that particular thing, then you need to go and look and see what scripture says about you, what the creator says about you. And mm -hmm. let that be what is verified. Mm -hmm. Daniel, you composed and yeah, yeah, a little too composed, maybe. We'll see. Um, I think it's really important that we that we understand that every Yeshua did not do anything that we see in Scripture on accident. Like everything he did had a purpose, and he was he was God incarnate, teaching us how to live and teaching us how we can live. And so when he goes off in, in his quiet places and just prays and, and is with the Father, he is hearing from God in those moments. Like, you know that's true. And that's not just because he wanted to and because he needed to. He, it's also so that we could see we need to do that and we can do that. And that we can commune with God in that way and receive from God in that way. And I'm just I was just sitting here thinking, like, how can I articulate this more because i really feel like there's a lot of people out there right now especially people who have been in torah because i know we've talked about it but there's this fear that when you step into the spiritual you're going to it, it, there's something about it that contradicts the torah like if it's not written in the torah if you can't read it mm -hmm. then 
then it's not true. It's not something you should do. But that is also a lie. That's not that's not true because God communes with us through his spirit. And so you're talking about the guardrails, and it's also been talked about as a fence. The Torah, that is, the commandments are a fence, you know, as as a don't go outside of this fence, but also it protects you. Yeah. And but the thing is, when you think about a fence, you typically think about a small pinned in area. And when you think about a small pinned in area, it's like you don't have much room to work with. You don't have much room to move around. And so by nature, it's going to lend toward a little bit of a smaller thinking. And like you can't like you're so pinned in that you can't think outside of the fence. But think of the Torah less like a fence and more like a gigantic mountain range that protects you. There is so much room within what God has provided with his commandments and with his spirit, with his truth that we can dwell in. It's not just a small area. And so with all that, just trying to articulate to people that the spirit is not a dangerous thing. It's not going to lead you away from the truth. It's going to lead you closer to the truth. Yes. Um, and I've been going through this devotional um it, it's it's this particular part is specifically about um being honest with god praying to him in honesty brutal honesty and and then being silent before him and writing down what you hear him saying to you and it's really cool because here at the beginning they go through five barriers i'm just going to go through them real quick um because these are very applicable and i have felt every single one of those the barrier one to and this is barriers to you being able to write, being so confident that he speaks to you that you're willing to write it down. Barrier one, that was just me thinking those things, not God speaking. And there's paragraphs and all these. I'm just going to give the verses that they give. First Corinthians 2, 16, we have the mind of Messiah. We have the mind of Messiah. We can also have the thoughts of Messiah. Well, yeah. Barrier two, Presuming to hear and write God's voice down is dangerous because it is subjective, diminishes the authority of the Bible, and ultimately could lead us astray. It's too risky, and we have the Bible anyways. Let's stay safe. The truth is in John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And just think, if the prophets had thought like this, they never would have written down any of the prophecies. <laughs> <laughs> Barrier three, I should hear... I should hear perfect the first time. Every word must be God's voice dictated on the page. The truth is Hebrews 11, 5 through 6. Enoch was commended as having pleased God, and without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw to, near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So it's that seeking, it's that process. Two more. Barrier four. This is just wishful thinking. It's too good to be true. I love this verse, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory. That's it. Barrier five. I am too afraid. Or I am afraid to journal God's voice. What if God punishes or condemns me? And this is a huge one. Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Messiah Yeshua. Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, guys, we're we're out of time, so I need some closing thoughts. And uh, Daniel, if you'll text those to us, let's uh, do a program in a couple of weeks on them. Oh yeah, man, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, that got me all fired up. I, I'm hoping that whoever's listening is is also is also uh, fired up. And I'm fired up because that last statement. I cannot tell you how many people the pleasure to be able to talk with you and looking forward to Camp Mashiach and Revive, where a lot of times this happens. No condemnation here. Yeah. I, I'm already just, if you were listening and you're thinking about it and you're just worried about what other people will think or how someone will judge you, then that's not the right person to go to. There you go. We're not going to because everyone has come from someplace somewhere. All that matters is from present to future. What are you going to do about it? It's your responsibility. You could have been for, you could have been in so much stuff. You could have gone through so many things or even willingly did them. But there's something calling out to the Father that you want to be a part of that truth, that it be a, revealed in the truth that the Father is in you. And I want to mm -hmm. uh, just to pour love on you and just say it's going to get better. It will get better. And if you thinking about, if you need to write to us uh, on purpose at mail if you ever have a question or ever 
you are doubting some things, please reach out. We're just here. No condemnation whatsoever. We're going to give you what God's revealed to us in truth. And because every time that has happened in the past, <laughs> it was always in love that God spoke to those people. It wasn't from me. It was from God himself. Cause I know he said those things because they became a bucket of a mess and it was nothing but love over them. So I want to, <laughs> that barrier one thing that was, that is just such a huge barrier for so many people and mm -hmm. realize God's going to pour love on you so that you can heal because you're, he's not going to condemn you and Amen. banish you. There you, go. Ah. there you go. Ryan, take it out. Well, unfortunately, uh, I know we're not going to see you all next week because we're at Canvas Shiok. Uh, so if you guys are, any of you are listening to the program and we'll be there, we look forward to seeing you there. Um, and please, if you can, like reiterate, reiterate what Dave said, write us at uh, onpurpose at mail.com. Come see us at Revive 2023. Yeah. Uh, and perhaps mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions off of some of these topics, uh, let us know. Mm -hmm. That would be great to hear your thoughts uh, and any questions that arise. There you go. And, yep. uh, you know, maybe, maybe just maybe at uh, Camp Mashiach, at, uh, uh, at Revive, that, you know, the Father would be still seeking those that would worship in spirit and truth so he can reveal the plans that he has for them. For good and not for evil, to give us a future and a hope. So live your life on purpose. <laughs>